Today is March 24th, I believe. <laughs> Let me make sure I have the day right. It's March 24th at 7.42 in the morning. I was supposed to be checked in at the hospital at 7.30, but it's okay. We're on our way. Like, girl, I'm pregnant. I'm not moving that fast. I'm trying my best. So we are on our way to have this baby boy. See you soon. So excited. I don't know why I just pulled this energy out of out of nowhere because I'm very, very tired and very, very hungry right now. And I know they're not gonna let me eat, so that sucks. <laughs> Might just try to like sneak into like the cafe and like grab a sandwich and throw it in my bag or something. I don't know, but we are getting induced. I'm almost 40 weeks. Uh, the doctor wanted to wait until I was past 39 to allow the induction. So we have this, we had the schedule. It's not like a surprise at first. I was like, oh, like, let's just have a surprise and let the baby come when they want. But like, girl, I can't eat, I can't sleep, I can't move. My legs are getting swollen, everything is a mess. And it's safe, so why not, you know, induce and push this baby out now. I wanna see my son. We didn't do any 3D or 4D ultrasounds, so we have no idea what he's gonna look like. Like, I don't know, I, I don't even know what I would look like as a boy. I feel like I would look like the weekend son. <laughs> Like, I don't even know like what, what could he even look like or watch him come out looking exactly like Anthony and I once again was only the vessel <laughs> Here we are. Oh my goodness, okay Hey guys, so I'm in the hospital bed. We just jumped from the car to being in the hospital bed But I am all attached to everything. Um, I haven't been induced yet So I just did all my paperwork got my blood drawn. They're gonna have to redo some like prenatal um blood test and stuff unfortunately because the last place or the place I went to to have them done didn't like send them to my new OBGYN something like that so um we're gonna have to do that but other than that I'm hooked up we're gonna check my cervix and then after she checks my cervix we're gonna actually induce me and then it's basically a waiting game at that point yeah I'm just chilling over here so, hey. ready so my OBGYN told me, make sure that you eat something nice, eat something big before you go into the hospital. So I told myself, I guess I'm gonna have a big breakfast. But that didn't happen. <laughs> so for breakfast, cranberry juice. Is it induction medication time? Yep, yep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, the induction medication. Ooh. There goes the blood pressure machine. But the induction medication has been administered. They're gonna slowly keep turning it up, but now it is basically just a waiting game. Um, I'm already four centimeters dilated. When I came in with Nyla, I don't even think I was like one centimeter, so it was like a fresh thing. And she was breached, meaning she had her feet down. So we had to also wait for her to turn, but baby boy is already down, four centimeters. She said I already did a lot of it at home, so yay, happy to hear that. I have to pee really bad, but I don't feel like walking to the toilet. <laughs> so I might just pee here. But apparently I've been contracting this whole time, so it's like every 10 minutes I'm having a contraction. But they're not painful. Um, they're not big ones either, though. The big ones are going to start showing up very, very soon, though. Just found out that I'm actually allowed to have guests in the room. When I called in to do like my pre-registration, they told me that I couldn't. So the nurses were like, um, yes you can. <laughs> so hopefully baby shows up around, you know, early enough to where Nyla and grandpa can come and visit later on today, hopefully. So am I gonna be doing this natural or am I getting an epidural? I don't know, we will see. It depends. Like if it's like really, really bad, then let's get the freaking epidural before it gets too bad. But if I'm just like, they're like, oh, you're seven centimeters, you're eight centimeters, and I'm like chilling, then I don't know. I don't know. I think you should do the epidural. <laughs> I know the doctor's like, yeah, you're probably gonna tear again. So I mean, up to you. <laughs> Got my drink in my cup. Got my water. I like to have his water and ice chips and cranberry juice. Cheers. Extra medication, she just turned it up from two to four. So she said, you're gonna start feeling these contractions. You're having them, but you're gonna start feeling them a little bit more so. 
child. Here we go. I have an update. So they just checked my cervix. So at first I felt like a rush of water. So I was like, oh my God, did my water just break? Like what just happened? And the contraction actually started really hurting. Um, so they just came in, checked my cervix, and I am now six centimeters. So I came in at three slash four, now I'm at six. So the medication is doing what it needs to do. Um, yeah, everything is progressing really, really well. I am definitely starting to feel the contractions. So I'm looking at my little like chart, and you can see the like, shh, like it's spiking up. But yeah, everything is going really, really well. Um, I'm, I don't even know. I'm, I'm feeling good, definitely discomfort, but it doesn't feel any worse than my period cramps because I have severe period cramps when it's the time of the month. So I think it's just, my body's kind of used to that feeling a little bit. But yeah, uh, what did they say they were gonna do? I think they're gonna break my water so we can like progress things faster if needed. They said they're gonna call my doctor and like tell her how I'm doing and everything and then she'll let us know like if they want to, you know, break my water, just like leave me. I feel good. More than half, baby. I only need four more centimeters and we can start one out. Baby balls are <laughs> the epidural has been administered. You'll never see that kind of a thingy. So I am now seven centimeters dilated. So I only need three more to go and I can push the baby out. Um, Everything's going really, really well. I did just feel like a huge like rush of water just come out of me, so I don't know if my water just broke or if I just peed on myself. <laughs> I'm not sure. Quick little room tour. So that's where you come in. I'm not gonna show my charts and stuff. My closet, straight ahead. That's where baby's gonna go right after he's born. Bathroom over there. Here's where Anthony's going to be sleeping. It's a lot better than last time because if you watch the other birth vlog, you would see that it was literally like a bench half the size of that and he had to somehow squeeze on it. We got the chandelier on deck. Okay, okay. I think this is one of the more remodeled rooms because when I gave birth to Nyla, I literally was in the room to the left of me. So I think this is one of their uh, newer up-to-date rooms. So my water actually just broke and now I feel all the pressure down there so he is definitely making his way out. You guys can't see it but they put a peanut ball in between my legs to basically just kind of like help guide him and open my legs up you know, so he can do his thing but I'm shaking right now. I don't know if you can tell but I'm shaking so I can feel all the pressure of him now. <laughs> on my lower half. Um, I'm fine though. I'm trying to like not shake. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. Are you? Give me a kiss. Mm -hmm. I love you. I love you. I'm so tired now. <laughs> <I'm sad. laughs> I just got like so nauseous out of nowhere. Just peeped my brains out. But like that just completely came out of nowhere. Look at me. Nice deep breaths, okay? In through your nose, out your mouth. Okay. Uh -huh. 
Okay, you got it, you got it. That was quick, from eight to 10 in minutes. Coming right now? Huh? It's coming right now? Um, you're complete, so we're calling the doctor, okay? But we also have a doctor in house, okay? You got it, okay? You're doing good. I'm so glad I get to meet him. <laughs> Yeah, that was really fast. No, it was. From the time your water broke, your, you were like six and a half, eight, and then ten. Really fast. Good job, okay? You're doing good. Oh, yeah, I didn't feel this with Nyla. No. <laughs> oh, no, it was just like I pushed twice, yeah. just slipped yeah, up. I got the table over it. <laughs> She like literally checked her uh she, her water broke and she still was like uh six or seven post period like back there and then I put her on that peanut ball she was like eight rolled her to the side and went to three yeah. <laughs> in a minute. <laughs> She's, uh, she is zero, like it's just right there, but she wants to push. Okay. She wants to push. Almost there, okay, Mom? Yeah. Doing good. Whatever position, if you want to be in your back, your side, whatever is working for you, okay? Hello there, Jay. All right, Dad, Anthony, this is your side over here where I am at. Here we go again. Oh. Is it 
Oh, here where you did it? Yeah. Okay, so all you do is draw an Mostly just looking at dad's butt. Just have a little <laughs> I'm grubbing in with some enchiladas. <laughs> and Anthony's taking care of her little baby. Yeah, it's his daddy. <laughs> I just successfully breastfed for 30 minutes. I'm very, very happy because. Nyla didn't latch on and my milk also didn't come in. So the fact that I already have like a little bit of milk in there and he latched on super easy, super excited. <laughs> so I'll be able to breastfeed. Oh, look at him. He's like starting to puff so you can see his face a little bit more. He looks like his mommy. <laughs> so weird. Anthony got his twin and I got my twin. <laughs> The baby. Oh, doggy. <laughs> doggy. What? Dog. Baby. Yeah. <laughs> She's blowing kisses at him. <laughs> yeah, I grew them in my belly, remember? <laughs> Quick little update, even though, as you guys can tell by my face, I am about to pass out. Oh, I'm so tired, it's 11 o'clock at night, but we got moved into another room. This is the actual like, recovery room now. Um, Breastfeeding has been successful up until my last time trying to like feed him. So I try to give him a little bit of like a formula because they tested him and he has jaundice. Um, because he has jaundice, he, he needs to have like fluids constantly, you know, so we like push it out and get that out of the system. So I try to give him some milk, but he really was not having it. And now he's over there. Sleeping, laying on Anthony. Nyla and Grandpa are gone. <laughs> they left like an hour ago. Uh, I guess Nyla just fell asleep like 10 minutes ago. Um, so like everything is good, but we're just in the recovery room. I don't know if the nurse is gonna come back in and tell us the results for you know his jaundice today or if it's gonna be tomorrow in the morning. I'm just hoping that I don't have to, you know, he, ha he doesn't have to go to like the NICU and just stay in there. So, kind of nervous about that because Nyla had jaundice like severe and she was in the NICU for like two days, um, two or three days. So that was really, really hard. Um, I could leave the hospital tomorrow. These damn diapers. 
Like this is one of those things that I put in my hospital bag. I was gonna film a whole like pack my hospital bag with me, but like I just did not have the time or the energy um, to do that. So I didn't really bring that much stuff. All I brought was like sweaters, fresh clothes to change into, pajamas. Um, Cause they pretty much provide you with like everything you need in the hospital. Last time I bought this whole like $60 kit that came with like a squeegee bottle and spray and those cold pads and everything. But the hospital gives you all those things. So this time I just kind of came kind of like bare with like laptop and like clothes to put on. So yeah, everything is good. Everything is solid. Now I might shut my eyes and try to get some sleep or something because I am definitely exhausted because I had to push this baby out. I can't believe the epidural literally like cut out as my water broke. Like my water broke and the epidural just completely went out the window and had no effect at all anymore. Very, very painful and um, they gave me some, what's it called, some Benadryl because my stomach is all itchy now and then they also gave me Motrin so because I don't want to take Narcos they offered me a Narco but if I'm breastfeeding I don't want to even though they say it's safe like I just don't want to transfer that through my, my breast milk you know I'm just sitting here watching American Dad it's like the only thing on TV I brought my laptop and everything I have my phone but like uh, I'm just sitting here watching cartoons Hello everybody, I am back with an update. The reason I'm giving so many updates is because just in case there's maybe another new mommy out there or new dad that's watching this video and they just want to see like how the whole process possibly goes. So it's now almost 5 in the morning. Um, I fed him three times since 11. So he's been eating every like two hours. They just weighed him again and they said his weight is like solid, like it hasn't gone down. So that means that everything that he's been eating, like the breast milk, and then I've also been giving him this a little bit after I try to breastfeed him just to, you know, fill his tummy up. And we're trying to get that jaundice out because they checked his cord belly and it was a little high with the jaundice. So they're doing, or they already did another blood test. They pricked him in his little foot, it felt so bad, but he took it like a champ and he slept through it the, second time they did it which was like maybe an hour ago and now we're just waiting for the results from that i changed his diaper he had his first like solid poop well not solid but like he had his first like real poop and pee and everything so that's really good and even though my epidural failed i still got one so it leaves you itchy that's like one of the main symptoms so if you get an epidural be prepared that afterwards this didn't happen with nyla so i was like hmm, that's strange because so i got epidural with her but i didn't experience it my camera just cut me off it shut off but yeah make sure that you bring like some sort of anti-itch lotion because i did get a benadryl but they said i can only have it once a day and the itch is kind of coming back so i've just been putting like tons of freaking lotion all over my legs and my hips and my stomach this is just regular moisturizing lotion that they give you because like i mentioned earlier you don't really have to pack that much stuff like the amount that you're paying at the hospital take advantage of like like i need more lotion i need more spray i need this i need this like it's all included in the cost so you really don't need to bring that much stuff. I'm gonna take a shower in the morning and then I'm gonna ask for the L-shaped squeegee bottle so I can like, you know, spray myself down there and make sure I'm really clean because I do have stitches. I have a second degree uh, tear and I did feel the needle <laughs> actually sewing me up. It was one of the most weirdest feelings in my life. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna drink some water, go back to bed because it is five in the morning and then probably wake up again in an hour whenever they uh, give me the results so we'll see what happens fingers crossed because they said um, they might be able to even just send me home with like a treatment blanket which I think is like a light treatment blanket thing that you plug in and you just put over the baby so we might even be able to just treat him at home so I'm looking forward to that let's see
nice and clean got myself together and now i'm about to eat some lunch let me show you guys what they gave us because anthony's not here yet he's back at home just you know checking on nyla and stuff she's with her grandpa we know she's fine obviously but he's a paranoid dad <laughs> like he's just like i need to see what she's doing at all times which i understand i'm not complaining um but I just took myself a shower, got nice and clean. This is what they gave us to eat. This is Anthony's, so hopefully he gets here before his food gets cold. I mean, we live two minutes away, so. But y'all, they hooked it up. And then for me, I love how they gave me two orange juices, they knew. Like, yeah, that looks really freaking good. So I'm about to eat and then pump time. And I just want to say something real quick to the ladies because I feel like someone out there needs to hear this. Um, if you can't breastfeed, you're not a failure. If you can't breastfeed, you're not a failure. Because um, that's exactly how I felt with Nyla. I could not produce breast milk. It was very, very hard. Um, I tried all the cookies, the teas, I tried the different foods that you're supposed to eat. You know, keep pumping even if nothing's coming out so you, maybe something can develop type thing. And it, it just didn't work out. So just wanna say that right now, like if you're struggling, it doesn't make you any less than a woman because it's so disgusting that when I told everybody that I couldn't breastfeed, there was a ton of women that are like, oh, that sucks. Well, if your baby's on formula, your baby's gonna have issues. Or if you can't produce milk, you're not a woman. But this time, a little bit is coming out. So I was able to breastfeed him yesterday. So I'm gonna pump and then go and take him um, his milk because he is unfortunately in NICU for the next couple days because he has jaundice, just like Nyla did. Me and Anthony have incompatible um, blood types, if you didn't know. I and Anthony are very lucky to have produced two healthy children because jaundice goes away after, you know, some light therapy, so he'll be fine. Just as Nyla was fine, you know. But I'm about to try to pump and let's see what comes out. I'm gonna eat first and then I'm gonna pump so I can have some, some energy because right now I feel like I'm about to pass out again. Nyla was a formula fed baby and she already talks, she walks, she runs, she jumps. She's in her 85 percentile for her height. She's in the 65 percentile for her weight. So like, don't feel discouraged. Don't feel like, oh my God, I don't want my baby to be a formula baby. There's nothing wrong with that, okay? <laughs> Hey guys, it is now March 29th. Uh, my son came home yesterday at 1 p.m. He's doing amazing. He is a big, big eater. <laughs> this boy is eating every two hours, two ounces, and in between an ounce snack, he'll wake up for like five minutes, get his little snack and go back to bed. <laughs> Um, he he's doing amazing and Nyla and him are amazing together she's a great big sister like she keeps looking at my stomach and she's like baby like what's going on like where's your stomach <laughs> and when we brought him home like she saw him in the hospital she was able to go in and like see him but when we brought him home I think she thought that he was a doll because she went up to him like and just lightly poked his cheek like are you are you real? <laughs> like, are you a baby doll? <laughs> she hands me his bottles. She'll put his bottle in his mouth very gently. She's she's amazing. We're just really grateful that we were able to have two children and that they're healthy. And the only thing that we had to worry about was a little mild case of jaundice, which I had jaundice too. So I wasn't really like concerned. Of course, I was still sad and crying because I got separated from him. I carried him for nine months, he's my son. And I cried with Nyla too, having to leave her in the NICU and after getting discharged from the hospital, I was like, can I just stay one more day? And they're like, sure you can, but your insurance won't cover it. <laughs> but he's doing great, she's doing great. And I wanna give a shout out to his family for being my family and filling, you know, that void that I had in my heart for a while because you guys know my situation. I don't want to get into it right now. This is a happy video. And I want to also shout out all of my friends all over the world that have, you know, been really supportive, including you guys. I am just waiting for his milk to warm up. I've, like I said, I've been pumping, pumping. So I have some sitting in some warm water right now because I have a feeling that he is going to probably get up for a snack in like the next like 10 minutes, 15 minutes. I have him on a schedule already, basically. I'm kind of like timing in. He's hitting every mark. So 
yeah and i have this like app on my ipad now that like allows me to like put all his feedings in so i'm like noticing a pattern and kind of like getting myself ready so he doesn't wake up crying or anything i could already have it ready for him everything's going really good i want to do a i'm not going to say too much in this video because i want to do a whole like after delivery q a so if you have any questions you can leave them under this video i'm also gonna ask you guys on instagram and snapchat to send me questions for that video as well so i'll share a ton of stuff with you guys i'm gonna put my registry for all my family and friends if you guys want to go and pick up anything and also if any mommies out there just want to go check out my registry and see what i put because this time around um, I was a first time parent, so I didn't know too much. Like I was just taking advice from the doctors and what other people were telling me. But this time, like we're going a completely different route and we'll see how that experience is, how that experience is. And I'll share it with you guys because we're doing like cloth diapers. And if we have to use like disposable, we're gonna use like Millie Moon or um, the Honest brand. And then like we're actually looking really deeply like we didn't use johnson and johnson with nyla so like don't get me wrong we didn't use like you know super toxic stuff we tried our best to you know get what we could um but a lot of stuff was not accessible at that time i think it's because like covid and everything was going on too so like everything was just kind of like out of the loop but if you want to go check out my registry and see some of the like non-toxic more natural products like even like laundry detergent. If you wanted to just go and take some screenshots for your shopping list, definitely take advantage of that and just go like check out some of that stuff. And that's obviously not everything that we'll be using. So I will in my Q and A video um, share with you guys more products and more stuff that I'm going to be using this time round and how it ended up working out. All of that. Let's do the wrist test. That's how you check if the milk is warm enough. Put a little bit of it on your wrist and see if it's warm because it's been in the fridge. So we're good to go. So I'm going to go feed my baby boy, put him back to sleep. I can feel my left boob getting swollen. So I'm probably going to go ahead and pump again. Um, he's been latching on, so I'm really happy about that. But yeah, I'm, I need to keep this milk going. So we got to keep pumping because I'm not trying to lose the momentum. This has been quite a ride and I can't believe I have two children now. <laughs> I was like the one that you least expected to have kids, but now I got two <laughs> and I'm the only one that has kids. I can see the sun coming up. Oof, yeah, it's late. Okay, he's up, I gotta go. I'm not gonna let him cry. So I love you guys and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. <laughs>